The British Museum's new exhibition, Ice Age, Arrival of the Modern Mind, brings together an intriguing collection of artefacts from around the world that span more than 40 centuries. But for its organizers, this is not just an archaeological display, it's an art show. The exhibition aims to show that as long as 40,000 years ago, early human societies were creating works of art and thinking in a way that demonstrates a highly evolved mind, similar to our own and capable of translating sights, experiences and emotions into methods of artistic expression. The remarkable connections that are drawn between these pieces and famous works of the 20th century suggest that Ice Age cultures can be linked far more closely with the modern world than one might expect. To that end, curator Jill Cook chose to begin the exhibition with a piece she hopes will help viewers bridge the divide between works created thousands of years apart. Well, the first piece in the show is a wonderful um, sculpture made from mammoth ivory of a, a woman which was made at least 23,000 years ago. Um, but she's not the oldest figure in the show, so she's actually out of chronological order. But we wanted to use her first because as people come in, we wanted to challenge what they see as ancient and modern. Picasso was absolutely fascinated by this piece and he kept two copies of it in his studio cabinet. And at that period in the 20th century, artists were looking at new ways of expressing themselves. And one of those ways was through cubism, in which artists looked at the body, dissected its volumes, played with them, reassembled them into new and fascinating shapes in which you could still detect uh, their sexuality and their forms, but those forms were completely transformed through the artist's eye and imagination. And in looking at this piece, Picasso realised that they were not the first to do this. Although they were inventing a new language of art for the 20th century, that new language had previously been invented many thousands of years before. Women played a significant role in the art of Ice Age cultures, and in the exhibition, they're portrayed at various stages of life, young and nubile, during and after pregnancy, giving birth and in old age. Many have the abstract, minimalist look of modern art. Displayed nearby are familiar 20th century pieces, intended to make visitors feel more at home, viewing these as works of art, rather than ancient artefacts. We have two Matisses, and these show Matisse having observed the woman's body and abstracted and simplified the very basis of her sexuality. And we have very similar works engraved on ivory and on bone, in which the artist has done exactly the same thing, where the female body is represented as a group of, of patterns, of, of a triangular head, of oval breasts, of an oval going horizontally for her stomach. So across those thousands of years, human nature hasn't changed very much. Animals also feature heavily. The exhibits include representations of all the major species present during the period. Their features and attributes are often portrayed with astounding accuracy and many of these works illustrate a fascination with movement. Dr. Cook sees this as a sign that Ice Age people could translate their proximity to these beasts into creative expression. People are quite interested in how animals move and depicting those movements very accurately. And some of that accuracy, of course, comes from the fact that they're hunting and butchering these animals. So they know how the muscles and the bones go together, how everything works, and they depict movement um, very brilliantly. We're standing here by a lovely representation of uh, a, a cave lion. It's an extinct form of lion which stood 25 centimetres taller at the shoulder than the modern African uh, lion. It's the top 
predator in this environment. And the shape of the lion has been cut out. Now that's quite a formidable job because of the hardness of the ivory. And then it's been beautifully polished in this um, crouching position. Um, and for a long time that this has been um, interpreted as the lion waiting to pounce. Um, but this is also the posture of the lion which has already leapt onto the back of its prey. We have in the exhibition here mm. a wonderful engraving of three lions on a piece of rib bone. And you can read these in two ways. You can read it as a group of lions hunting, but when you look at the positioning of the legs on each figure, you realize that it's rather like a Muybridge sequence. And you read the same three lions as one lion running. The nature of the exhibits changes in the course of the show, which is arranged chronologically. While the works early in the exhibition appear to have no functional purpose beyond artistic expression, many of those placed later on the timeline begin to combine design and utility in objects such as tools and weapons. It is this, Dr. Cook says, that shows most convincingly that this period marked the arrival of the modern mind. It's possibly a reflection of how the mind is dealing with uh, bigger issues of identity, of socialising, of bonding, of contemplating higher uh, values and connecting with the world in spiritual ways. It's about coming to terms with yourself and your community within the world. And that requires a, a modern brain which is seeking to imagine and compromise and think ahead in ways which establish the beginnings of modern societies, albeit in a very different form from those we know today.